G'day guys and welcome back to my lab and to our seventh episode in our uh, Super Bogan Brothers Godot 4 platformer tutorial. In this lesson we're going to have a look at collectibles. So big thing about most platformers is that you collect coins and things like that. So we're going to introduce some collectibles today. We're also going to introduce some pitfalls. So Super Mario Brothers claimed so many of my lives falling down a hole. Uh, we're going to add that in too because that's a really easy thing that we can do just to tackle onto the end to make this lesson a bit more well-rounded. So let's have a quick look at our WWSS and then we'll go through our steps for today. Well, let's get started, shall we? So get yourself into your Godot 4 project. You should have something on the screen looking vaguely like this. This is where we left it at the end of our last lesson. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna add our collectible coins. So the first thing we need to do is grab our coin asset and drag that into our, um, into our little file explorer here. So I am going to do that now. You will find the coin asset either in the OneNote uh, or in the GitHub download if that's the way you're doing this. I'm just going to grab my coin and drag it into here. Then it just adds it down there. So I've now got a coin that I can use as my sprite. Let's create our scene to add that sprite to. So remember to do a new scene. We come up to the top here. We click on the big plus sign. That then just creates an, a new empty scene. We're going to click on other node and we're going to use a sprite 2D. So search up sprite 2D and then rename that root node to coin. Now that's the basis of it, but um, we've got a lot more to do just to make it work. So first let's click on our inspector window. Here in our inspector window, when we've got our Sprite 2D node selected, it gives us an option to put a texture in there. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab our coin that we just dragged in, drag it over and drop it where it says empty for the texture. And then you can see our coin appears just there like that. We're almost there, believe it or not. We also need a way to make sure that when our player touches the coin, the coin disappears. We'll deal with the um, with counting the coins when we do our GUI um, layer episode, but for now we just want to be able to hit the coin and the coin vanishes, right? So to do that, it's really quite simple. We want to add a new node as a child of our Sprite 2D, and this is going to be an Area 2D, and we're going to rename this Area 2D Interaction. And I'm just going to use this sort of convention through um, all of the different collectibles and things like that. So we've got our interaction area 2D. We now need a collision shape to attach to that. That's why it came up with that little warning. Now the warning's on our collision shape because we haven't made it yet. So we come over here to our inspector where it says shape and empty. We want a circle because that seems, actually, you know what we do want? We want a capsule because our coin is kind of more oval shaped than it is circular. All right, so now we've got an area 2D that is covering our coin. We need now a script for our coin so that we can signal that area 2D to that script. That might sound a bit technical. We have dabbled with this stuff already, but um, hopefully as we go through these concepts, you just get more and more familiarity, right? So we need to click back on our root node that says coin, and then we click on the little scroll with the green plus, and that's gonna make a script called coin GD because we've renamed our root node to coin. If we still had that as Sprite 2D, then it would come up here saying Sprite 2D. This is why it's good to rename our root nodes. It just makes it a lot easier to track things. So yes, we wanna call our new script um, coin, uh, coin GD brings us into our script. Let's just save our script as coin, uh, sorry, save our scene as well, just so it's all getting saved as we go. So we've now got a coin.tscn and a coin.gd. That's our scene file and our script file. All right, so we want to extend our Sprite 2D. We can leave our function ready and our function process just as pass for now, that's fine. But here is why we needed to make our script. Let's click on our area 2D, our interaction area 2D again come over to our inspector window but click on node and then find where we've got body entered and we want to double click body entered and signal this body entered area 2d back to our coin script so now we've got this new function function on interaction body entered at the moment it just says pass we don't want to pass we actually want to do something here so we're going to delete the pass and here's what we want to do we want to check and see if our player um, or if the thing touching the coin is in the player group. So I'll talk about that a bit more first. So if, if we go back to our player script, in our function ready, we added this line, right? Add to group player. That allows us to check 
um, really quickly and easily in any other script whether or not it's our player interacting with our thing. So in our coin, if we go if body dot is in group, and in here we put uh, actually it's a capital P player um, colon at the end, we can now basically say well this is the only condition we need to meet to do something. So if the body that comes into contact with our coin is in the player group, we just want to get rid of it for now. We will do um, more with this next lesson, like I said, but for now we just want to get rid of it. So function on interaction body entered body. If body is in group player, Q free, deleted out of the scene. So that's the chunk that we're really working on today, okay? We've created a, a script and it had this function reading and function process that passed. That's okay, we can leave them be. We just need to signal our area 2D through to this script and then add those two lines. That's all I wanted to do for that bit. But let's go back into our 2D view of the world and actually add in some coins now because we're basically done with the coins for today. So we come back to our normal world, we find our coin.tscn, our coin scene, and then we can just drag some of them. Now, straight away, you might be noticing that our coin is maybe a bit too large. We can fix that really easily. We don't even need to delete that one. Just go back to our coin, come and find it here. Let's zoom ourselves in, looking up coin sprite, and let's just make this a bit smaller so it's a bit more um, reasonable by our standards. Oops. And then click on the middle of that one, drop that down. Cool. Let's save that, go back into our world. Now, yeah, that's a bit better, isn't it? That looks a bit more like it. So let's make a few of these, just to make sure that it's all working, and when we come into contact with them, they all disappear, etc. Another one there that I copied, yeah. Okay, so now we've got some coins that we can interact with when we go into the game. So let's save what we've done, let's click play, and see what it looks like. All right, so the coins are there, everything else is still working normally. And the idea will be when I jump, uh, I waited until the toad got too close. Oops. Uh, when I jump, I can collect the coins. Let's also make sure we can still kill this toad. Oh, I jumped over him. Ah, oh, I'm terrible at playing video games. All right, so we've got that bit working, right? We've now got coins that when we jump up, we collect them. So let's uh, exit out of there before I get killed again. Okay, that is the first part today. Our next part is we're going to work on the pitfall. All right, so it's now time to do those pitfalls, which are a pretty common part of uh, Super Mario Brothers, right? It's one of the things we all die from before we get the hang of our jumping. So what we're gonna do to start with is make some room for us to fall down. So let, in our world scene, we wanna click on our tile map. And then we want to get tile map down the bottom. We want to click on the eraser tool. If you use the little rectangle, it means we can erase big blocks at once. So we can like delete all that, delete that, uh, something like that. All right, so that just gives us some things we can fall down, right? That's all we need to do there. Let's click on our world uh, node and add a new node. And this one is going to be an area 2D as we have dealt with before. Let's call it um, interact. And then let's give it a collision shape. All right, so we've done that before. You should be familiar with that. We've created an area 2D called Interact, and then we've added a collision shape to it. This collision shape is going to stretch across the uh, whole, oops, the whole base of our thing. So where have we got collision shape? There it is there. Let's do that, and then let's drag it down. So the idea here is that at any point in our map, if we fall down below that, we'll touch that area 2D, okay. Now what we need to do, let's save it as we go. Let's just, oops, let's, uh, where's my world gone? I must have zoomed in something fierce then. All right, let's just test to make sure everything still works. So it does, the toad can fall down the hole, excellent. Now, next step. All right, let's um, click on our world node, the one at the top, and then we're gonna attach a script to it and it's gonna be called world.gd. So we're creating a new script called world.gd and we need to go back to that interact area 2D, go and find the node menu in our inspector there and then go down to where we've got body entered and we wanna signal that to our world script. Let's just test it again. I just like to make sure everything works each step. So far, so good, all right. So what we've now got is a really basic script here and we've signaled this on interact body entered back through. But we don't wanna pass with that. What we actually wanna do is check to see if um, is in group. We wanna check and see what is falling into that um, pit. So if it's our player, we want our player's um, 
script to run this die function. So the way this works is, so we've called this, this on interact body entered body function, which is to do with this over here, right? So it's looking for a body to enter into that zone. And whenever a body does that, it wants to check and see if it's in a, a group called player. If it is, it wants to run the die function in whatever the script is attached to that body. So um, our player script is attached to the player body, obviously, so it can then run our die function, which you'll see here, function die. So it says, if is dying return. So if we're already dying, don't worry about it. Um, and then we've got play that animation, move the player up and down. Okay, so let's save that and see if that works as well. So we can still jump, we can still get our coins, excellent. And if I fall down, it, uh, it kills me and I do the whole bounce up and down thing, just like in Mario. Alrighty, so that is what we were aiming to do today. Let's have a look at our must, may and might so that you um, know exactly what you need to achieve and then just watch through, pause, watch through, pause. That's the way to use this, right? Rewind, watch it through, pause it, take your time. There is no rush. Um, just take your time doing it and if you've got any questions, let me know and I'll do my best to help you out. So let's have a look at our must, may and might.